Now, there's a segment of all of these conversations. Uh, it's called Underrated, Overrated. I mention a name or a thing. I ask you if you think it's underrated or overrated. You're free to pass on any of these, uh, but I'll try just a few. Uh, the Pet Rock, overrated or underrated? Well, I'm coming from an, a position of extreme bias because That's I, fine. again, did the obit of the inventor of the Pet Rock, a man named Gary Dahl, and it was neither overrated nor underrated. It was a beautiful example of what it was. It was a totemic thing that caught the fancy of this kind of cheesy 70 pop culture. So with hindsight, overrated perhaps, but had it not been overrated, we wouldn't have gotten a story out of it. Now you have a background as a cellist, I understand. So Pablo Casals, overrated or underrated? wonderfully rated. I mean, I think he can never be rated highly enough, but it was he, and this is well documented through his series of televised master classes around the world in the very early 60s, who really caused the instrument's popularity to soar. Most people had really not conceived of the cello as a solo instrument before. It was just sort of going um pa pa at the bottom of the orchestra. So, um, I mean, he was rated magnificently, but by the same token, uh, you can never rate him too highly because he was wonderful. But what if I say, well, Casals was a bit like Schnabel. He had incredible profundity, but there's just too much scraping on a lot of his recordings. And in some ways, they're hard to listen to today. He was path-breaking. But if you were to sit down and put on, say, the Bach cello suites, actually very few people, including cello lovers, would pick Casals, right? They'd pick Janos Starker, they'd pick uh, Heinrich Schiff, or do you agree or not? It's true in light of modern sensibilities, uh, you can certainly hear uh, squeaks and uh, occasional bits of strangeness in the Casals cello suites. I suspect he was older when he recorded them. He lived to be, of course, almost 100. Mm -hmm. uh, recording technology has improved since then. And I think he uh, was on such an exalted plane that he gets a buy. You, he, he can be and should be forgiven any of these little transgressions that uh, make him seem mortal. If you had to pick a favorite cellist, I know it's hard to do, but do you have a pick? Ooh, it depends on the genre. Uh, I like different cellists for different things. The, uh, the great uh, doomed uh, Jacqueline Dupre, of course, uh, was a wonderful cellist. Mm -hmm. um, Ross Rapovich, Starker, uh, whose obit I wrote. Now you have a wonderful book called The Riddle of the Labyrinth, The Quest to Crack an Ancient Code where you study the world before ancient Greece. Fantastic book. It's a story of how after cracking the code, we learned a lot of it was actually about accounting, economic themes. But I'll ask you, Homer's Odyssey, overrated or underrated? Oh, again, can't rate it highly enough. Can't rate it highly enough, we agree. Adverbs, overrated or underrated? Overused. Overused, so they're overrated in a sense. Maurice Sendak the author of famous children's stories, where the wild things are. Maybe the wild things are the children, right? Overrated or underrated? Oh, can't, again, uh, can't rate him highly enough, and his legacy will endure. Uh, again, his obit I had the privilege of doing. The Times put it on page one. That's, you know, when is the Times ever going to put a picture book author on page one? That's how magnificent he was and how newsworthy. Was there something surprising you learned about him doing his obit? I think just uh, what a melancholic he was. Now, that's far from unusual for creative people, but it was um, his personal story was rather painful. He was someone, you know, as someone who grew up poor, Jewish, knowing he was gay in this very repressive era. Um, he was a deeply, deeply melancholy man, and of course it comes through in the work as well. Studying all these different lives from so many walks of life, different countries, to some extent, different eras. What in life do you feel is underrated or overrated? Say, by your readers. So there's various cliches, like, oh, I spent too much time in the office, not enough with family. So many people say that. I don't actually believe they necessarily really mean it. But what do you feel on that, after studying all this history, what in life is underrated? Well, I think list questions are overrated, if you'll forgive me. Mm -hmm. um, what in life is underrated? Silence, stillness, reading real books on paper. Those um, are all underrated. Yeah, having real human contact rather than the um, 
social media that's become in our atomized postmodern lives a substitute for real contact.